you know, thanks for what you do with your podcast and all the rest. Uh, you're doing a great job. Hope everybody keeps tuning in. You get a lot of good info, a lot of insights, understandings of how to get strong, how to stay strong, how to use your strength. You do a great job, dude. <laughs> you make things better than they are in real life, I think. If you don't follow Massonomics, y'all do it. Social media, uh, website, everything. Massonomics. Yeah. Hey guys, hopping on here for a quick note before the episode starts. Episodes 421 and 422 were not recorded in our normal situation. They were recorded at Home Gym Con in French Lake, Indiana, which means that we were not using our equipment. Uh, it was a setup that they had there for us. We recorded the episodes. We didn't know what was going on, how it was working, and unfortunately the audio was clipped pretty bad and the video camera was not set up correctly either. So we will not have video for you guys for this week or next week, and the audio is not the best quality. Again, it was out of our control, we're sorry, we wish it was better, wish we could have done something about it, but we didn't have the option to do anything there. So uh, bear with us, we hope you still enjoy it. Uh, lots of other good content coming on the way. Welcome everyone, uh, including actual live listeners today to episode 422 of the Massonomics Podcast, <laughs> the lifting podcast about nothing, recorded live from uh, none, other than, none other than French Lick, Indiana. For the first time, we've got myself, Tanner, Tommy's over here, and then you guys all know Keith by this point. Big Keith is here with us. And then we've got a few people uh, listening live. We're just kicking off the very beginning of Home Gym Con 2024, our first experience here, our first Massonomic experience. Um, what do you know so far, Tommy? I know that it was quite the trip getting in here. <laughs> we, we, uh, we had some travels, didn't we? There was some serious travel experiences. Uh, of course, the most direct way to get from Aberdeen, South Dakota to Louisville, Kentucky, and then uh, French Lick is through Denver. Of course. Yeah. It's like, like all good trips out east, they yeah. start going to the west. Yeah. And uh, Keith, this is actually your second experience at Home Gym Con, so we brought in the expert to let us know what to expect. It is Friday morning, so it did just kick off, and we're just kind of starting to get our feet wet now. Yeah, made, made it out last year. Uh, this year is already, you know, looking to be about 60, 70% more people uh, as far as vendors and just capacity, uh, attendance. So hopefully that, uh, you know, does, a, does well enough that this thing can keep going and we can keep having home gym con, you know, 2025, 2026, et cetera. And Keith, I think people are going to be wondering, you're now on the Massonomics podcast again. This, yeah. is, uh, this is a lot recently. I mean, I, wait, I thought we recorded, uh, isn't this coming out on Tuesday as the Unpaid and Underrated podcast, and you're just my <laughs> guest? I thought that, no. Okay, so this is the Massonomics podcast. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here again, you know. Uh, I don't know how many uh, crew have been on more than a couple times, so that's pretty awesome. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so what are your first thoughts, Tommy, on the convention? We got to go inside. Well, we had the breakfast, first of all, which was probably the most important. But then uh, we did get to go in the big convention room where everyone set up. What are your, what's your initial impressions? Uh, initial impressions. So my only other experience with a show of any kind is the Arnold. You know, we're, we're Arnold veterans over here. And the Arnold is absolute mayhem. You don't really have time to talk with anybody. Uh, so far in the, what, hour we got to walk through there, we actually got to just sit and talk with people and see their stuff, see their see their booths. So that part's been really refreshing so far to actually be able to do that. I'd say that's the biggest difference right off the bat, wouldn't you? Yeah, it is really cool because at the Arnold, we are busy from like, you know, it's 15-hour days for four or five days straight, and we're running our own booth and doing our own thing. And we don't get to experience much of any of that from that perspective, so it is fun to be more mm -hmm. like uh, someone hanging out a little bit. Yeah, than just I, I'm actually again. excited to get done with this and just do a, a <laughs> right. full day of that. Absolutely. Right. So that's what uh, your life is like, Keith, here at Home Gym Con. Yeah. We're getting to experience a little life through the eyes of Keith. Yeah. And when you know Keith, you kind of have the inside track to knowing everyone here, apparently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's, uh, so all the smaller companies, for the most part, all the repeat companies, for sure, I know, if not by name, at least by face, most of them. Uh, a lot of the bigger companies out this year, um, you know, kind of just have sales guys or just like employees, but still cool to check out their stuff. But uh, I'm really here for the smaller companies and just, you know, the, the fellow home gym influencers, if you will, just the, you know, the home gym enthusiast is more than I, I'm not an influencer, I'm an enthusiast, uh, but it's cool to just hang out with like-minded people, uh, you know, if I'm going to buy stuff from any of these people, I don't know, it's just, but it's cool to make connections and friends, uh, you know, just because you're online friends doesn't mean you can't come out to home gym con and meet people in real life. When every episode of this one would be no different, we have to have a supporting our supporting members segment, so um, Keith, you're the official spreadsheet record keeper of how many Massonomics podcast supporting members are here 
So uh, what's your what's your grand total that uh, you think you're coming up with? Thir- oh man, I wish you had set me up quicker. Again. Uh, <laughs> Putting or, him on uh, the spot. Uh, uh, um, I got I've got a dozen. So I've got uh, Big Keith. That's me. Uh, Coach Carp. Uh, Matt Cappy. Uh, I think it's uh, was it CPAP? Yeah, he's got the, he's got the funny. Oh, C- is he going to be here tomorrow? I believe. Okay. Here. Uh, and he signed up just recently. I think he made it. T- might have taken your spot. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yep, yep. At the Lift Hard Live Easy Classic yep. this summer. Uh, yeah. We got Joey E. Uh, he's he was here. Big he's doing the, Joey's doing the grip. He's on the grip conference right now. Yep. yep. Uh, Hogan and Co- is, Coach Carp is doing the strongman competition. Coach Carp's doing the strongman yep. tomorrow. Yep. Uh, I got Hogan in the audience right there now, he is. wearing that beautiful oh, jacket. That actually reminds me. Speaking of supporting <laughs> our supporting members. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. Special delivery, all the way from Western Northeast South Dakota. Oh, man, there we go. Not a lot of orders get delivered by hand. <laughs> <laughs> those, those are special socks for Hogan to wear this week, this weekend. No, I'm going to sidetrack real quick. Was was put it in the old vice grip on the short list of Hall of Fame status? Uh, like actually. Oh uh, no, that's been a, that's been a more yeah. recent development. That would have been a good one. Uh, uh, we so, did have to go over on our trip though of what uh, common Midwestern sayings we're going to lean to the most here. <laughs> we, we assumed if we we had a long enough list, we could have full conversations with people without <laughs> actually saying. <laughs> Anything of any <laughs> substance or meaning. Get several minutes of talking and with yeah. no, no content actually. Uh, in this, the second half, we got uh, Kurt Locker, Chris from Belt Fad. Kurt, Kurt's running the strongman competition. He is, yep. Chris, uh, Chris from Belt Fed is has his own booth, of course. Yep, and then we got Tommy and Tanner. I'm not sure who that is. Uh, Big, Never heard of her. Big Jake, who is a, puts all this on. He is a, he is a newer uh, supporting member. Uh, Adrian Gluck's down there. We got George, uh, Big George. I met him this morning, I believe. And then Debo is a wild card that I don't think anyone's met yet, but he said he'd be here this afternoon. Yeah, you got George E. I think it's George G. Oh, I messed yeah. that one up. A little mm-hmm. fixed to the spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought you paid attention to no, details, no. Keith. Yeah. Well, you tell people to get social media that matches yeah. the real names, you know, and that would just make life a whole lot easier. So for the that's the ones we know, but there was a, did you see in the grip competition, there was someone wearing the Massonomics Lift It team? Oh, okay. I uh, we'll to find him and think see that guy's pop, possibly a supporting member too, but I'm not sure who that Good is. Good chance. Yeah. yeah. We got a we, we speak of the double. We have oh. another supporting member. Uh, well, big possible. Big Kevin was not on your oh, list. He was not. Add another. <laughs> big Kevin. Add him up. Thanks. Another one. Thanks for telling me you're coming, Kevin. <laughs> big, Ke- big Kevin. I guess they will literally let anyone into this place <laughs> at this point in time. So <laughs> thanks for joining us. <laughs> comes just locking in. It just uh, crew just starts to <laughs> a, at this rate one person every ten minutes. We'll have this yeah. thing filled in no time. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna make a good video. I hope that like, kind of like I hope that like picked up him. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like everyone walks in gets their own entrance. Actually, yep. actually, we got Greg from Heavy Metal Barbell back there. Yeah, Greg, <laughs> Greg. Yeah. All the way from Minnesota, right? Yep. Fellow fellow Midwestern. Kevin, where are you? What state are you? Are you Ohio? Yeah. Michigan. Yeah. Michigan. Close enough. Why didn't you bring Scott? Okay. He, he made the decision last minute, but he did come dressed appropriately for the occasion. Dressed so to impress. Appreciate that. Um, Keith, we're, we're already looking at a few booths filled with equipment this morning. Is there any equipment here that you have your eye on that, uh, you know, I know you flew too, you're like us, so you can't necessarily drag it home with you now, but is there anything that you got your eye on that you, uh, being here and checking out in person, really caught your attention. You want to pull the trigger. I think I'll probably end up buying an axle from Dean at some point. Uh, it would actually for people that don't know who Dean is. Uh, Dean from Black Widow. Uh, but if you're Keith, you're, you're first name based. <laughs> <that's what> <laughs> yeah. It's cool to not say the company name, yeah. just the people behind it. <laughs> that's right. That's it's true. also great for sales too. Uh, uh, yeah. So I, 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 that's been on my short list of a thing to do is to get a, a newer axle that, accom- that accommodates my needs of being able to to overhead press between floor joists and not having to like space it out with collars. So, but now that I just signed up for the strongman show, I got to kind of put my funds that were for that into accumulating a handful of strongman things. So I'm actually, uh, the freedom strength, uh, sandbags. I got to check those out. They look, those look pretty beefy. I did some like a uh, sandbag to shoulder up to like a hundred pounds. Like, Oh, that's, those are kind of fun. Uh, so I might, Problem. Definitely not putting those in my carry-on, but that might be a, t- a turnaround and buy some sandbags. You, soon. you said freedom strength. I'm more of a freedom fitness kind of guy myself. <laughs> that, uh, uh, big uh, Ashton yeah. in the house, <laughs> or Ashton if you know the people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and big, big Ashton has a spot on the Unpaid Underrated Podcast as soon as he becomes a supporting member. You know, it might take him about a year to get on because we are booked about three months out. But you know, that's all he needs to do to be a supporting member. Uh, to be a supporting member, get on the podcast. So Keith, you've kind of made the 
full transition to strongman competitor now. You've left your powerlifting days completely behind. Has this presented a branding conundrum for you with the no <laughs> wine cellar and possibly moving out to oh, the shed? No, no. I, we're definitely still going to be a powerlifting enthusiast, Jim. I uh, will just uh, take this summer and the next few months to kind of do something different. And I just uh, didn't want to give the crew another chance to bust my balls of being so focused on powerlifting because <laughs> they kind of took that to heart. I was like, wow, do you guys really think? I, I mean, I know people think I'm an asshole to some extent, but I was like, I don't want to be known as the asshole at a powerlifting meet. So, and I don't know how to be chill at a powerlifting meet. Like that doesn't go hand in hand to me. Like I can't like drink beer and have a good time at a powerlifting meet. I'm there Keith to do doesn't it doesn't have an off switch. But, but strongman I can because I don't know shit about strongman and strongman is just make-believe because it's all just made up things. There's nothing, you're not going, you're not working towards a total. You either lift it or you don't, but like who cares in my opinion as far as that. So I'm not going to be disappointed you, at my result at a strongman show like I would be disappointed at my results at a Do you think you're going to feel the same way on meet day though, Keith? <laughs> is, is it still meet day or is it show day? At that well, <laughs> and I would also say from personal experience of doing strongman shows, plus me, there's still plenty of room for disappointment in yourself <laughs> yeah, in the yeah, yeah. So I can tell you that firsthand. I've, been, I've left many a times very disappointed. So mm -hmm. don't worry, but you still get well, to experience that well, thanks too. Thanks for ramping my anxiety back up after I, you know, invested another hundred and some dollars into switching gears. Uh, to, but no, I think it's going to be a blast. Uh, the, the, all the events are very manageable for a novice that, you know, isn't that strong. Uh, the, the loading bar aspect of it is great. The rising bar, so I can jump in wherever I want on some of the lifts. And then uh, all the implement starting weight was like, oh, I can do that. I just maybe not for a lot of reps. I, I wanted to hit on the amenities here a little bit, mm. the facility that we're, we're yes. in. So what is this? The French Lick what? What do we call it? Resort? Resort. Believe, yeah. um, French Lick population is, they said, 1,700. Yeah. There must be an adjacent town here that there's I more than just French I think it's the French suburbs. Lick. You know, we're in the yeah. suburbs of... Um, this uh, convention center hotel area is kind of wild. It's not what you would... Uh, it is expected in French Lick, Indiana. I don't think right? I didn't really know what to expect. I kind of in a way feel like I'm on the Titanic, you know, it's got this old 19th, <laughs> early 1900s vibe to it. Yeah. In a, in a real classy way, though, you yeah. know, <laughs> not like I don't feel like I'm going to go down on a ship and die while I'm here. <laughs> but <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> still time. Uh, but yeah, it's been, it's, uh, I'm excited to explore the resort though. This has been, it's been very and interesting. There's a we, casino attached. The here. casino is all, we got to keep Tanner, alley, we got to do, we, we cannot let Tanner get near the casino though, because no. if he does find <laughs> a card table, just he's gone. He, he will never see him again. It's, it's it over. will podcast tomorrow at that point. If, so if Tanner's up all night playing, you know, blackjack or poker or whatever, at what point does it become tomorrow, and then we can't talk to him until he has his coffee. You know? mm, yeah, where does the changover happen? I'd say yeah, probably somewhere around 5 o'clock. Be because hell, I might be out past midnight No, I'd say like tonight. 5 a.m. is, is Yeah, I don't know if there's be. a specific line in the sand time. It's more of a general feel of when no one can talk to me until I've had my coffee. So, um, But luckily, at morning bre breakfast, they did have coffee. and we were, There was I, a bit of a delay. You did have to, like, <laughs> yeah, I think your yeah. breakfast was gone before you did have your coffee. So we kind yeah. of broke the rules and had a little chit-chat beforehand. Yeah, and this setup is cool. So we're just kind of down the hall, basically, from the main convention area where everyone's, where all the exhibitors are. We'll be podcasting here today and then doing one more, uh, maybe get a couple different guests on tomorrow to do one more. And then we're planning on shooting three or four different YouTube videos on some equipment and content when we're here, right? Correct. Tommy's kind of the cameraman content guy, but he has been letting me touch the camera from time to time. So I'm Kind of know my way around that. He's, he's well a bit now. of a camera guy over here now. <laughs> yeah. So when we get done with this, I mean, we'll probably head right into starting to do some of the content stuff, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Well, we'll probably make some more rounds, you know, get to know a few more people and then hit them with the content. Got to ease them into it. Yeah. yeah. I think if you actually get to know them first, like like the, the conversation you had with Dean at Black Widow, we talked to him for 10 minutes, and now you can go back and actually shoot, a, you know, another mm -hmm. five, 10 minute video, essentially the same thing you had just on film, probably, rather than just cold. Cold, uh, cold recording yeah. you know, when you don't even know the guy. So uh, I think that'll be cool. I, I definitely, I would recommend doing like maybe split your time like 50-50, just shooting the shit versus content probably would be a, a, good, uh, a, a good ratio. For sure. Uh, I would like to mention that uh, this trip in general is powered by Bells of Steel. They're, they are the ones that help bring us out here and get us involved in Home Gym Con this year. Home Gym Con was on our radar last year, but being the first year, we're probably hesitant to take the step, honestly. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe we would have even been hesitant this year, but uh, Bells of Steel stepped up and um, made the trip possible for us. And then in addition to that, 
This episode, like every episode we do, is brought to, our, brought to you by our, our uh, typical sponsors, which would be Juggernaut AI as one of them. If anyone's interested in uh, seeking out some training for powerlifting specific or just general strength training, you want to get stronger, you want to get better, check out Juggernaut AI. It's a relatively simple app to use and uh, get comfortable with, and it tracks your progress really well and goes through basic periodization uh, to peak you towards an actual meet. The most important part is remember discount code Massonomics when you sign up. That'll save you 10% for the lifetime of your membership over at Juggernaut AI. And this episode is also brought to you by our good friends at Barefoot Shoes. Yeah. Is Barefoot here? Has anyone seen them? I do not think they are here this okay. year. All right. Well, their name was on the wearing list. barefoot shoes. I'm wearing barefoot no. shoes as well. Yeah. They are our favorite barefoot shoes. Yeah. If uh, the company was founded by Chris Duffin and our neighbors to the north in Fargo, North Dakota, they've been putting out some top-notch barefoot shoes for several years now, including the Ursus Low Tops, the Ursus High Tops, the Osos, and the Bruin Boots. They've also added a new shoe to the lineup. It's coming very soon, so hop on their website to check that out. And while you're on the website, make sure to use code Massonomics to save 10% on your next order. And you can do that at www.barefoot.store. Thank you. Barefoot shoes. Thanks, Barefoot. Uh, Keith, were you wanting to do an ad at all? For, for, you could, do you want to try the Strength Co? Or, uh... <laughs> uh, do it! Uh, do it! I uh, I, uh, yeah, the Strength Co. Have, have you used some Strength Co so products I do before? Own so this pair... episode is also brought to you by Strength Co. Keith, what do you know about the Strength so Co? So I do have a pair of 2.5s I bought from Grant last year. Oh, uh, okay. Are, Bit of a Strength Co uh, guy over everything here. Everything that you had, would think of. Uh, if I would to tell people, if I had to start a new gym... If my house burnt down and my plates, made, my plates melt, melted and they were completely non-functional, I would tell the insurance company I need strength throw plates to compensate because they're the only like plate that I would consider American-made and of that mm -hmm. quality. So that's why you know when I have my like, what's my gym cost to replace? It would basically be what I would take, take to have four thousand dollars worth of strength throw plates, uh, or which four thousand pounds that is, which would be much more than four thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so your numbers aren't adding up there. Yet. Yeah, yeah, I, I misspoke there, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, go get you some strength go plates and tell them Massonomics sent you. Uh, Keith, quick question for you, not particularly relevant to home gym con, but just relevant to, relevant in general. Um, you know, I do have the one pair of York deep dish mm -hmm. plates on display at Massonomics gym, and I do really need a second pair to like even it out. And I, I don't know if you know this, but I always like a story behind the vintage equipment. It's almost more valuable to me mm -hmm. than the vintage equipment. Uh, itself, so you know, it would make a great story for my second pair of York deep dish plates. Well, if you and Tommy, oh, okay, so I'll, you want to throw the gauntlet down? I'll throw the gauntlet down. Yeah. You come, you come, pull a Gluck and pour the no wine cellar, uh, and I will sell you a pair for going for so, for eight hundred dollars. So is that a deal? Uh, yeah, if you All come, right. to, <laughs> one of those books. The non -marked, an unmarked okay. pair. I'm not okay. selling a marked pair for eight hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay, so and. and uh, for anyone that doesn't know, what's what's the distinguishing difference between the marked and unmarked? Uh, so York, the the, the marked, yeah, the mark forty fives go for double to triple what the unmarked ones are, and I, I think I would say like if there's over a thousand unmarked pairs out there, there's maybe a couple hundred marked pairs. I'm assuming, I'm, I'm, be wrong, I'm assuming the ones in the gyms are are, are marked. Yeah, well, so, so maybe explain what the difference between marked and unmarked. Uh, is. So on a deep dish forty five, so we're not talking like a milled forty five, which is more popular in the seventies eighties. So the deep dish, you you know, the fifties and sixties. Uh, you're talking like a two, three inch, uh, closer to two and a half, three inches deep. Uh, that a lot of people use them for grip training and stuff now. So the old 45s, they just say York on them, and they don't actually have a, a 45 pound emblem uh, marked out anywhere on it. But then there was a transitional period there. I think once I, I could be talking to my butt, I'm not sure, but there was a period of time where they did have the 45, you know, stamping, raised lettering, whatever you want to call it, in the mold. But I've, I put it this way, I own five pairs of deep dish and only one pair is marked, and I've never come across another pair. So the ones in the gym don't say 45 on them? Uh, right, is that right? I believe, yeah, yeah right. right. Yeah, you, you, you paid what going rate was, right, really. Right. And you would have, going rate is double or triple what you paid for those. So. Right, right. Okay. Hmm, did and not realize that. Speaking of vintage equipment, Hogan, did you bring my 85 pound York roundhead dumbbells? The okay, <laughs> all right, great. Uh, so, and I did speak with George, big, Supporting member George Green, and he's prepared for the handoff on the next leg of the journey. So, that's a heavy handoff. yeah, <laughs> he said that's a heavy handoff, and he's right. So that will be the final, 
piece of the collection for the York round headset uh, that Keith can finally get off my back that I've got the full full collection. And here. then you get the to... award for having a full set, right? Yeah. There's, there's a big ceremony. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do you do to let me into the club? Really, the only thing that happens is just this great uh, anticlimactic moment <laughs> where you're just like, well, shit, now I don't have that pastime anymore. So yeah. I, I got, got uh, to find a new hobby. The club of disappointment. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we did see quite a few other people just passing through already that we're going to have to talk to. Uh, past podcast guest, big uh, Mark Rosenberg, Deadliest yes. was in attendance. He is big, too. Yeah. He was looking as big as ever, wasn't he? <laughs> he is. is. Does anyone know, is big Mark doing any exhibition lifting this weekend? May, may, I could see I him pulling know. out like a 900 and some pound Jefferson deadlift. I don't deadlift. think he's on the roster for the strongman, but I would okay. assume he's going to jump in. On well, the well there's a deadlift event on Saturday, Yeah, there's correct? a deadlift, and there's, He'll an be overhead, doing that. there's a deadlift party, and then there's like an overhead press uh, log party, I think. I'd be surprised if big uh, Mark doesn't do some sort of 900 pound I, deadlift. I, I just assume he's ready to pull 900 pounds at any yeah. given time. We need the, the only problem here, the ceiling is way too high for him. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, where, where are we going to, well, I mean, the swing, if he stands on swing sesh and maybe, you know, he gets a couple more, uh, some kind, some, some other risers, we get a little closer to that ceiling, but yeah, yeah. it'd be very hard to get his head all the way up there. And then uh, Goob was there. He said he was with, uh, oh, yeah, I, gotta talk. I, I have to meet him. I saw him, but I didn't get a chance to meet him yet. Yeah. And several other booths. So what's the comparison from uh, 2023 to 2024 so far? What do you think? He said it really only down there for like an hour or two, uh, but it's just fuller. Um, last year there was, as much, I mean, I probably talked as much to people last year just because I talked to individual people for longer. So this year I kind of feel like I don't, uh, there's that, there's that many more people that I don't want to uh, uh, monopolize someone's time at their booth for more than like 10 minutes. And that's kind of like, I have that like internal clock. It's like, all right, it's been 10 minutes. I'm just gonna shake their hand, and, you know, <laughs> kind of circle back. Like, I'm out. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just for, I mean, you were down there. It's about a football field, right? Uh -huh. Like, give or take, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. But within 20% of the size of a football field, and it's full. There's like 80 plus vendors down there. And I don't know, but the, uh, there's ideally going to be three or 400, you know, uh, people just coming to check out the stuff throughout the, the you know, each day. So, uh, versus last year, there was 30, 40 vendors and like 200 people. So, I mean, it's already like 3X just being down there for a little bit. So, I think, it, you know, I don't know that it can grow 3x again, but if it stays the same and, you know, I think that's good enough. Like, I don't know that you want to be that much bigger unless you have a lot bigger space because cramming more stuff down there in that size. Uh, like, I think the vendors, I think Jake even said some of the vendors wanted more space than he could really allot them. So mm -hmm. to put you on the spot, Keith, uh, we know that Bells of Steel had at one point decided they weren't going to maybe be able to make it this weekend, but then they... Oh, was that? I, I didn't hear that. Was that, was that? <laughs> then they were able to... Uh, this trip powered by Bells of Steel, by the way, but then they were able to uh, change some things around, and they had a pretty good setup there. So have you spoken to them? I have at all? not. Like You'll have to introduce me to Kayvon so I, we can... I already uh, told it, them put this morning that we're going to be bringing you by to yep. introduce you to... I think... So, and now when you said that, was he like, who? What are you talking about? No, no. no he's like, no, I... That, you mean that asshole that made all those memes about me? <laughs> 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 the, the bales of... The, the, the B-A-I-L-S of... Yeah. -E no, he, he was a, no, he knew you were and he, he was excited <laughs> to meet you. Yeah, so, okay. so this man has yeah. quite the I mean, reputation. He, yeah. he, you know, he facilitated, you know, to some extent getting you and Gluck here. So I think that that alone, that's like three of my biggest friends in this community, so that's oh, pretty cool. Gluck supporting member. Added yes, to the I, list. I, I believe he's on there. Already. I mean, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, I think the fact that I said Adrian Gluck, it might yeah, just, yeah. no one really calls him Adrian, so. Yeah. So the bell, Bells of Steel is back in your good favor. Would you I'll have to check them out. I, uh, They're back on the list. <laughs> I did feel, you guys missed it last night. I felt really, I didn't feel bad. Like, uh, I could see why the wind, like the, the local uh, company uh, that they have were like, would have been overwhelmed to do it because when I got here last night, it's like, you know, three or four o'clock in the afternoon, their booth was like 1% set up and there's like the husband and then the wife that has a newborn just kind of watching and he's sitting there like reading their directions, trying to put together a cable stack and just boxes everywhere. And I'm just like, they're not going to get this put together. But I, I looked at it this morning. They had, uh, they had more, they had a lot of, they must have had more help come in last night and this morning. They got it. It looks like it's pretty much ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, Keith, you know, we're from South Dakota, right? I've heard. And uh, in South Dakota, one of our biggest attractions is Mount Rushmore. It's got four presidents on there. And on our pad podcast, we made up this game where we call it the Mount Rushmore game, where we like to get uh, get someone's take on four things that they would put on the Mount Rushmore, a fictitious Mount Rushmore. So I'm curious. You're, you're following me so far, right? Yeah, yeah okay. I'm, I'm familiar. <laughs> Everything's making sense. Yeah. 
So I'm curious what your deja vu with that game. It's weird. <laughs> your Mount Rushmore of uh, vendors here this weekend that you're excited to talk to, hang out with, check out product, whatever, whatever you're excited about visiting with. What what's your Mount Rushmore of Home Gym Con 2024? So I just, vendors? I mean, I guess I just go with ones that I have affiliates with, right? No, no. Uh, well, <laughs> I ironically, like, I don't know. That's, that's that's a loaded question. It's like who I'm the, who I'm the closest with as far as friends, whose stuff I would buy. That's, that's yes. such a. We're hoping to make people upset that you don't include. And then it's so like, a, do you are you talking about their, their booth presentation? Presentation, like, uh, so I don't know. Uh, Barbell Rescue, you know, Kim at Barbell Rescue. If you guys haven't met him yet, I'll introduce uh, you. No, I'm afternoon. excited to get over there. Uh, you know, great product, great guy. Uh, you know, m m m active military still. Uh, I believe, yeah, yeah, he's still active military. Very good man. Uh, so I, you know, I can literally talk to him about anything for like 20 minutes at a time, multiple times. I've, that I've, the handful of times I've met him in the last couple of years. Uh, so he's he'll be on there. Uh, Dean at Black Widow, I, you know, I didn't actually get to talk to Dean too much last year. Last year I was very timid. If I didn't already know you, like, if I didn't, haven't already had, like, DM conversations with, with you last year, I probably didn't talk to you just because it's like, unless you came up to me. So I had not really talked to Dean last year, but we have had since talked in DMs over the last year straight. Uh, so, he, yeah, I really like his booth. His stuff's great. I'm just, I'm, like, waiting to have an excuse to buy something of his. It's just, you know, finances and my training trajectory have to kind of line up. Uh, who else has got a good booth? There's a lot of good booths out down there. Uh, What'd you name so far? Is that two? Yeah. It's got two. Uh, Barbara Rescue there. And, uh, belt fed strength. I really need to buy a belt fed belt. I've been saying that for a year. I think I even said it on a garage gym experiment podcast a long time ago when they were like, what's the next thing you're going to buy? And I said a belt fed belt and I was just like, but I think it was right after I had just bought another pioneer stock belt. Uh, and I was like, well, damn it. I don't need to spend more money, but, uh, you know, Chris and because Randy you're kind are, of a pioneer guy. I, it's more just they were, you know, you, you could get them for like a hundred bucks and yeah, you know, they're delivered good. And it's, yeah. it's a quality belt. But you know, after meeting Chris and Randy and you know, have, interviewing Chris a couple last week, I really need to throw some money at them. And Randy does some really in, in, intricate things with her carvings into the belt because it's not they don't do um, uh, sewing embroidered. They yeah. don't do sewing logos. They literally she carves Hand the paints cut, yeah. into the letter. You're, you're like, a leather guy, aren't you, for belt skis? What's that? Are part? you a lever guy, aren't you? For yeah, yeah, I've switched to the so yeah, I've switched to the Pioneer uh, for lever. But Chris is also he sells just a blank. Uh, yeah, where you can throw. Yeah, that. so he even tells people just buy Pioneer's lever because nothing's better than that if you're gonna have a leather be a lever belt. Uh, and four fourth fourth. Boot. I would say also about belt fed. I have their regular. Pants. Yeah, you. I have their pants belt, and I know he doesn't like to make <laughs> those. Them. Those are uh, <laughs> legit. Oh, yeah, their actual oh, pants belt is. Okay. I would recommend that to anyone listening from belt fed. Uh, their actual pants belt is legit. Oh, who else? I don't know. Mm, you guys suck. This is hard. Uh, uh, that's what she said. I guess I'll go <laughs> just for the sheer size and the amount of stuff they brought. Rogue, I guess. Uh, I mean, there's so much stuff. I don't know that I'm going to talk to anyone at the Rogue booth, but I don't want to. I really don't want to put Rogue on there. God damn it! I, I wish you had texted me this 20 minutes ago, you bastard. <laughs> That's not how it works. Oh god! Uh, god. And, and, and that is something we've debated too. I've, I've debated: do we at do we tell the guest no, this is going to be? Because no, then it could like you no. could get more honest answers. Yeah, you don't want to prep people too much uh, on anything, no. in my opinion. I guess. We'll go with uh, Bells of Steel, yeah. We'll put Bells yes. of Steel. <laughs> yeah, Since hey. we're sponsoring this podcast, yeah. I'll He's do my come part. full circle. <laughs> I'll do my he part. He is. Uh, you know, as long as I get something free from, I mean, uh, you know, as long as, uh, you know. Keith, Keith, we know the owner. We can introduce you. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, <laughs> we will be. <laughs> A year from now, we'll be doing this. We'll say, so I've been DMing the Bells of Steel owner for the past year. We know each other really well. <laughs> Tommy, what, because uh, you are a bit of a home gym guy. I so have now, become yeah, a bit of a home gym guy in the gym last couple really months. ramped up significantly. I was just mm -hmm. there getting to train uh, yesterday. I mean, it feels like we've done a thousand things between then and now, mm -hmm. uh, but it was just yesterday. We got a little training session in there. What equipment are you most looking at? I know well, you actually have some specific so, items you want to check out. So. Yeah, so right away, um, actually at the Bells of Steel booth, I like their, their changed plate storage system. I need some of that because I only have two pegs right now, so just to get a little more storage for the plates would be nice. The uh, Barbell Rescue, I want to get over there. I mean, the Black Widow stuff was awesome. I currently, that's not something like that's not super high on my list, but I could see having something like that someday. I was impressed with that. The... Um, Deadlift Jack. Who, who are we Clever. 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 Clever, yeah. There you go. Ah, those, I've never seen one of those in person. Those are super high quality. Those are really you nice. The full Jack or the Mini Jack? Well, even the Mini one. I, I, the Mini one is full Jack around here. Yeah, you, know, what, what you, you, to, you always you know, have to come to completion. You guys that have unlimited space live a little different lifestyle. Than I'm you. actually 
pretty sure I need to find a way to get that one display that they you actually already, 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 already working the system I there. Way to get it, but if someone like Hogan was drove here and could drive it and then ship it or something, maybe we could figure something out. But. And worst case too, I helped uh, John Greaves this morning. Uh, well, he was looking for a deadlift jack because he was going for a heavy deadlift at the fringe booth, uh, and they didn't have a there was wasn't a deadlift jack within like a walk you know close vicinity. So he ended up walking down to Cleva, and that he didn't want to take their big one, so they let him borrow two of the the, the small Genesis jacks. Right. So he actually like we used them. Uh, just mm. one on right Each side. one basically at the end of the barbell on either side was still on the yep. shaft and uh jacked that up and i think he worked up to 495. so those are i think we've been to four booths yeah. all four have been very impressive so far right. which uh makes me as soon as this is done we're really gonna get the rest. in there yeah <laughs> uh and we have kind of a weird thing from a content shooting perspective so we want to film content with almost all of these uh uh vendors you know the company owners specifically mm -hmm. that are here but we also just want to actually talk to them. Yeah, not put them on the spot on our very first be, uh, meeting ever. Uh, in front of the microphone people, too, because we have things we want to talk to them about. So it's kind of weird. We have to... We have to chat with them once first and then mm -hmm. come back again later. It, it is always the contact. thing of that that is once you're doing the vlogs is it's really fun to have actual real organic conversations with people. <laughs> but at a certain point you do gotta stick the camera in their face. Right. And I know for some people that changes it, for some not, but it is it's just part of the process, isn't it? Yeah. I feel that way to an extent. Like I'm not I don't I obviously I don't do YouTube content or anything, but like I feel like I'm neglecting just doing Instagram content and stories, but even, even pictures. I do want to get like selfies with people or like you know actual photos, but like I want to live in the moment. So it's like that fine mm -hmm. line of like, am I going to regret only having like six pictures when I go home? But I also have two full days of talking to people and like making lasting impressions. Versus, hey, will you take a picture with me? It's kind of that. Where do you find that balance? Uh, and I, I don't know, but I I'm not overly interested in wasting my time doing content. But I do need to do like five percent, like, I guess. But I definitely get some crew content. So any crew, we're going to get pictures together and do uh, photos and shit like that for sure. Awesome. I would also mention that this episode is brought to you by our great friends over uh, our neighbors right there in South Dakota at Build Fast Formula. You can check them out at buildfastformula.com. That's where we got their full uh, supplement selection, a variety of supplements there. Vaso Blitz is one of the crowd favorites, the nitric oxide support supplement, no caffeine in that product. And then they also got their more traditional caffeinated pre-workout supplements. And then... My personal favorite is their 80-20 protein powder, uh, their special Chris Duffin design blend of 80% uh, casein, 20% whey protein. I like the chocolate flavor. I'm pretty traditional in that sense. And my favorite thing, though, about Build Fast Formula, Keith, have you ever had any Build Fast? Yes, uh, I've got. I had their their Peach Full Blitz, and then I think I had the Hangover shit. And, yeah, uh, and Ed Crew Falls. <laughs> yeah. Hangover shit. That's uh, a, uh, that is quite the testimonial you're giving there, Keith. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, Go on. It's got a name. Uh, <laughs> hangover. Uh, uh, I think you, oh, no, I think it's drink hack. Drink hack. Yeah, yeah, you were yeah, giving that. them out. Yeah. You were handing the pills out the night before at the party. Um, Speaking of strong men, we got one right here. He's oh, a strong yeah. man. <laughs> is, so. That's a very yeah. strong man over there. Uh, but yeah, check him out at uh, buildfastformula.com. Use the discount code Mastonomics. It'll save you 10% on your order. And if you sign up for any of their um, recurring uh, fulfillment programs, you save another 10%. You stack them on top of each other. It's almost 100% off. You can't afford not to buy them over at buildfastformula.com. This episode is also brought to you by Swiss Link. You know, we're all home gym people in here. We like our gym equipment, our barbells, our plates. But maybe sometimes you want to buy something different. So actually, I just wonder, is there a problem? You said we're all home gym people. I'm actually not. I well, own a commercial gym. Okay, I'm sorry. So we're, we're, we're back no, I just we're all allowed, gym people. Am I even allowed to you're be You're kind here of like an outsider, yeah, but you're allowed right, in this group. Right. We're all gym people here, but sometimes yeah. you need to buy something different. So you hop on over to Swisslink, and you'll see military-issued Czech bedpans. you see Italian champagne glasses. you see a British gas mask. It's all there on Swisslink. It's an unrivaled collection, and they have the highest dedication to quality customer service. Big Mo over at Swiss Lake also has produced a high quality Wavian fuel can that'll hold all of your water and um, even food. It'll hold that. They also are known for their uh, quality products on Shark Tank. They made an appearance on Shark Tank with their... their ba that bag. Uh, the, the Storm Bag. Storm yeah, bag, yeah. yeah. I think we'll take it, like, it, it accumulates like 300... It grows 1 million that. times in size. It, it grows exponentially, exponentially, yeah. exponentially larger as soon as water touches it. Actually, so, it's lawnmower season too, so I was really considering buying one of their new Wavian fuel cans, actually. Yes, you slap yeah. that on there. Uh, yeah. Maybe a drink spotter XL. It's the perfect combo. So, if you would like to get in on the Swisslink collection, head on over to Swisslink.com and make sure to use code MASS, and that will save you 15% on your first order. Swisslink.com, code MASS. 
Thank you, Swiss Link. Keith, do you know what the last one for the day is? You know, Texas Powerball. We yeah. saved this one just yeah. for you, yeah. Keith. Oh, God. No so, pressure, but. Uh, you know, they did not hand me the script today, and I'm very proud that they were able to add, you know, off the cuff or do all those, because I'm curious. I know you, you, when you were still in Tommy's basement, you read off the physical, you printed off sheet. I don't know if when you're in your basement, do you have a tab open where you. It's look? insider secrets. No, okay. well, <laughs> you know, I don't have a tab in front of me, but uh, I am a I am a barbell connoisseur, and I do own many a uh, Texas Power Bar. I think I've owned seven or eight over the years. I am currently down to three, three orange Cerakotes. Uh Their current production line has been pretty awesome with that. I love them immensely. Uh, very sharp, even though it is Cerakote. So if you uh, want to add a little flair to your home gym, uh, you know they've got multiple color options. Is there a you color know, you would recommend if someone's confused you know, or unsure uh, what color to get? I mean, green. I think no. I'm uh, I'm obviously an orange guy, so they're they're they're. <laughs> Bright orange is very pristine and looks great in the gym. My dad, ironically enough, my parents visited last week, and he's like, "Did you did you paint those bars? Are they?" And I'm like, "Nope." And then I, I told him like, "But basically, they spent a thousand dollars to upgrade these three bars from versions that were identical, just not orange." And he kind of looked at me like I was from outer space. And he's like, "What?" I was like, "Yeah." Where did I go wrong? Bars. Then the, you know, I made some of that money back from selling them, but I definitely probably took a five hundred dollar hit to upgrade the three. Don't bars. try to justify it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to tell but, us. You know, I, I I do. So I do. Have a chance, an opportunity to buy a Gen 2 for 150, but the guy, the kid said it's super dull, so it's like Gen 2 with the snap ring, yeah. yeah. So I know that's mm. I know that's like the more rare, but not necessarily valuable. But it's like, yeah. even if I, I mean, for 150, I can make it a beater bar, but well, we'll see. That's uh, that's that's something I might add to my uh, collection, but yeah, Texas Power Bars. And just keep your eye on your email too, because they literally are having a, a fifty dollar off. Sale. Yeah, okay, that, that's the important the part. Flash that right now, fifty dollars off. Yep, make yep. sure you take advantage of that. So thank you to all of our sponsors this week, obviously. Uh, what about any overrate, over, under? Oh, uh, do you have any off the cuff here? I'm thinking, uh, what do we think? Overrated, underrated so far? French Lick, Indiana, you know, uh, home of Larry Bird. Wait, 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 who's answering these questions, though? Nah, you guys. I got, I, I, Both I, of you. I got one for you guys. Yeah. Uh, so uh, overrated or underrated? Voodoo Barbell in the house. <laughs> Taco Bell quesadillas. <laughs> Okay, oh. Taco Bell quesadilla, when that thing is done right, is so underrated. I don't know what type of uh, special fast food seasoning blend that they're mixing together, but it is just the most perfect little Mexican fast food dish on the go. But when you get it at 1 in the morning at wherever we were at last night, you apparently don't get the filling. You just get the shell. So in that case, it is way overrated. But even when it's great, done, even late was a lie. <laughs> we were thinking outside the bun, and it, it didn't work out the best for us. But when it's done right, it is underrated. Um, what about Jersey Mike's? We had Jersey Mike's. What do you got, Keith? Do you have Jersey Mike's out where you're at? I don't think I've had a Jersey Mike's. Uh, oh, you never have? What do you think well, Jersey Keith's Mike's? Keith's are kind of an East Coast guy. Oh, Jersey see. Mike's. It's the only Mike I know. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice like Mike. Yeah, so uh, Tommy, overrated on Jer Jersey Mike's. Barbell Voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also, I mean, they're an enormous fast food food chain, of uh, uh, sandwich food chain, so at the same time, like, they're probably rated fairly high, but when you compare them to things like Subway, Jimmy John's, and those, <coughs> I am a, kind of a Jersey Mike's guy, so I would say that they are underrated. How about their giant sandwich, though, Tanner? How do you feel yeah, about the giant the sandwich? Giant this time I was... <laughs> it's like a full-on party like sub. Or it was <laughs> almost it was a party lot. sub. Uh, <laughs> they need, like... They're missing a size. Like, they have not a... There's they, one they, size in there. Yeah, there's, like, the yeah. small, the regular, and giant. There uh, really needs to be medium. in between. Right. right, there needs to be the extra medium size. Um, yeah, so one other thought I had, it comes back to something you said earlier, and thinking about it, even just seeing a few people that have came and gone, is... Is there something in the uh, gym community or maybe the gym equipment manufacturer community that there seems to be a disproportionately large number of uh, veterans involved in the space? Because there's, uh, I even saw the picture from Home Gym Con last year mm -hmm. that there's just a lot of veterans here in attendance and even within our crew and like a bunch of people, there's there's quite a few. Have you not, did you notice that too? Yeah, I would say that's that's fair. I mean, I, I you probably looking at 10% chance. <laughs> right. uh, at minimum 10% of the people down there are probably veterans. And if you go gym uh, business owners specifically, it's probably closer to 25 or 30%, I'd say. Right. Uh, Whereas general population, I think it's typically people say 1%. So, mm -hmm. you know, our company is half veteran owned. Fifty percent veteran owned, even yeah. in Mass Amic, So, But do you have a brick and mortar? <laughs> we're, then we're getting into Tango Charlie territory. Then, right? Don't want to get us going on Tango Charlie. I mean, they, so do you, you didn't see their booth down there, you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, not very many t-shirt vendors here, though. We had Voodoo oh, Barbell, who uh, mm -hmm. he just walked in there, and Spanky there was, was with Voodoo Barbell. Was there any besides 
Is there any other T-shirt vendors here at all? They, Ashton, do you know or anything that did not that yeah. yet come? Like, were they? They were was on the list, weren't they? Matt Vincent was he here? Or? I think he was on the initial, but I'm not. Okay. Sure. Last okay. year, I think he. I think he was only here for one day last year too. Okay. So okay. I'm not sure if they're uh, doing a one day. But to be, uh, speaking of Voodoo Barbell, if anyone in the audience basically was listening, that once your home gym con 2024 shirt, Jake's no longer making selling those on his own. You got to go get them from Voodoo, Bar Voodoo Barbell themselves, and then just buy this year's home gym con T-shirt. So what do you think, Tommy? Is it a missed opportunity with not, us not driving and bringing the booth here, or what are you feeling right it now? It is a little bit of a miss. It's also a miss for everyone here. They're missing out on all the Massonomics wares. That's true. But but you that, wouldn't, you yeah. wouldn't be able to do any content, though, like at all. Like, it turns it into a way different uh, experience. You can't, you can't have it all. You've got to pick one or the other. You'd have to run the booth for us, Keith. I mean, <laughs> my, my going rate might be a little more than Joe's. You know? I think I, I bring a little more in the table than some of those other crew you had in Columbus. Yeah. Not, not really. Uh, no, that's uh, that, that would not what I've done that. That's no fun. Yeah. Also, <laughs> also, shout out to Coach Carp. He brought the uh, Drink Spotter XLs to put on display mm -hmm. this he weekend. Did. So it wouldn't have been possible without supporting member Coach Carp. So supporting our supporting members, a bonus one right there. <laughs> Anything else we need to hit on this week uh -huh. before we wrap it up? We're, I think we're on kind of a specific time slot here. Yeah. So probably only have we, a couple they're going to be double pushing us off stage up. pretty quick here. Uh, Keith, um, what about uh, any exciting big future plans for your podcast, Unpaid and Underrated? We're just going to keep doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've, I had, when you guys released the Hall of Fame status the other day, I think I had a handful of people that kind of was like, hey, whenever you can get me on, I'm ready to get on. I'm just like, I'm, I'm, we're booked so far out. It's just not really, like, I'll put you on the, the, the wait list, but it's not really a... Uh, like, which is almost a downside because, like, if something major happened and I could get a crew on that, like, did something really cool in the, mm, in the world, like, I don't have to move moment. the whole schedule also, down. Also, like, I, I think it's, it's much more better this way to have months scheduled for us, at least, because our people aren't really canceling on us or anything. I think, like, <laughs> having to do resets. Sounds nice. I think uh, you guys have had more cancellations in a month than I've had a cancellations in a yeah. year. So uh, we are actually having uh, our one-year anniversary episode will be next this coming week. So when you're actually listening to this, It'll be the same time frame that our, uh, you know, our one-year anniversary. So it's turned back on you. Do you ever think that a a Massonomics did, adjacent did you, podcast? It's like watching your bratty little sister grow up, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so what did we ever think that we would get to the this point? Or I mean, yeah, I yeah. like when you guys decided, yeah, we'll we'll help, we'll do whatever you guys need. You know, we'll support. Oh, you. did we think that? Do you think that I, I, you think um, Joey and Joey, Nate, and I would be? I mean, literally I mean, I think you guys were for you. Three are definitely obviously capable of doing that, yeah. so it wouldn't surprise me with you three. Like, if anyone was going to make a good run of it, I guess you guys would be good yeah. candidates. Yeah, and it's, it's possible, but there's, there's no doubt about it. It is a lot of work, and it's a time commitment, especially for a year, every single week to do one. Like, that doesn't happen on accident. No, so. when it was first being discussed as an idea, I wouldn't have guessed that you that it would. And also, like, uh, with precise consistency, mm -hmm. because a lot of people start and then they don't. And it's really know. easy to take a couple weeks off and then say, oh, let's get, you know, get it going yeah. again, and then take a few the weeks off. The starting is easy, honestly. Like, that's fun and yeah. exciting it's and stuff. Yeah, it's like, like, uh, when you've already done that for a bunch, then it gets easy to We wouldn't to be able it. to do it without Zoom. Like, like, there's no way we could podcast it. Like, in, like, you could we were podcasted just with, like, the phone call and thing, too. But, like, I don't know how you guys podcasted with just phone calls for two years, three years. Like, it's so much easier to podcast when I can look at the guy's face and, like, see that, like, he's uncomfortable. So let's change the topic. Or the other person has something to say. So, like, you know, you know it's just body language, facial expressions. It's, it'd be a... I, it would be so challenging to do a podcast with just audio for me. Luckily, since we started in 2015 or 2016, the technology wasn't there. And just through, like Zoom calling wasn't like a common thing. Yeah, so. It is a, like a cliche, but the technology really has advanced a lot there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, all right, we're excited to see what uh, Unpaid and Underrated does in the... Uh, I, I plan on there doing another at least another year of this. I mean, what is there? There's 400 crew, 400. I don't know the last. It was 430 crew. I've only interviewed 50 of them. So yeah, that, that's you. Anyone listening to this that wants to be on the podcast that hasn't already talked to me, reach out to me. Get on the list. I literally have a waiting list with like 50 people on it. I'm going to add you to that because I need you guys to help me. I can't keep track of all you guys that join the Discord and then you know may or may not follow the podcast Instagram or my personal Instagram. So it's like it's hard to keep tabs on everyone. But I do 99% of the DMs on Instagram. So Reach out to either the uh, you know the podcast Instagram or my personal. Come find me. We'll get you on the podcast next year. <laughs> Has there been an influx of uh, people desiring to get on after we introduced the Hall of Fame program? Yeah, I had three yeah. or four people that kind of was like, "Hey, can you <laughs> fill me in?" Kind of, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'll add you to the list." Yeah. All right, Tommy. Anything else, or should we bring this bird in for a landing? Let's bring it on in. Yeah, we're at our time, I think, anyway. So, uh, Keith. 
tell us again where they find you at? So unpaid and underrated podcast.com. Go follow the website. Uh, Nate puts a lot of work in that. We obviously, uh, the, the Instagram page, unpaid intern, I believe. Uh, we have a YouTube now. Go follow that. Leave us some uh, reviews. And I'm big Keith Honeycutt, seven, or I'm Keith Honeycutt 73 on Instagram. And go follow my Orange Gym and a wine cellar. And, of course, make sure to check out the Massonomics podcast everywhere you uh, check out podcasts. YouTube, subscribe. Uh, we've got at least a couple new YouTubes coming every single week. We've been, we'll record about three more here over the next two days. Tommy and I recorded a few last week. So we've got months and months of content prepared to be, to be coming out and released soon on our YouTube channel. So please subscribe, like, comment, review. Leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts for this podcast. And uh, tell a friend about it. Check out Massonomics.com. Buy the new Drink Spotter XL. Because the regular size list wasn't big enough, and bigger is always better. So now we have the XL. Tommy, where do they find you at? You can find me at Tomahawk underscore D. You can uh, find me at Tanner underscore Bear. Just make sure to follow Massonomics at Massonomics. See you next Tuesday. Boom. There we go. Good job, gentlemen. <laughs>